All right, what's going on, everybody? We're back for the second second episode of the Fresh Start podcast. Um, first, I want to start off by thanking everyone that showed love last week. Um, I appreciate you showing, uh, sharing our video, subscribing, liking, all that. Um, got a special guest with us today, Rico. What's happening? What's happening? So, um, first off, how was everybody's weekend? Did you guys have fun? Whipped your ass in space, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's wow. deep right there. <laughs> you see how she's trying to cut like, right off the right, bat? Right off the bat, right? right. <laughs> bat. Okay. So uh, what'd you get into this weekend, though? Man, I ain't do nothing but pretty much work and record, bro. The whole weekend. That's it. Yeah, grinding. Shit. Um, so where are you from, bro? I'm from Rayford, North Carolina. North Carolina. How'd you get to Savannah? Shit. Pretty much just a military brat, you feel what I'm saying? Mm. Uh live with my peoples at first. Then I started doing music in Savannah and I liked it here, so that's where I branched off at. Where is Rayford, like in relation to Raleigh? Boy, like, you know what Fayetteville at? Yeah. Right on the county line. It's like you in Cumberland County, then right as soon as you cross the county line, it's Hope County and that's where I'm from. That shit is small? Uh nah, it's small. City wise, mm-hmm. but it's a big country ass. Okay, gotcha. gotcha city gotcha. like they got farms and stuff out there in the boonies and stuff like that. That sounds scary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you said you were a military brat and you were bouncing around. Um, did you did you start making music in Savannah or did it start somewhere else and you just kind of made your way here? Like if I could remember how old I was in 2011. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking nah. Like I started freestyling when I was like 17. Uh, I was living with my moms, and I was like right next door to some country crazy motherfuckers. So I just used to hang over there all the time, and we just start freestyling and shit. With like, the country niggas? Hell yeah, <laughs> on me, hey, for real. But we we got it in. Though. I'm talking about motherfuckers in there freestyling a whole beat. Was y'all recording at all, or Hell just kind of no. just vibing out? <laughs> we were just like vibing out. We were just yeah. playing Call of Duty, rapping, baking shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how it yeah. works. Oh, um, shit. Uh, describe your music journey so far, I guess. The more I do it, the better I get. Uh, I, I mean, I said... In so, terms. Um, like, as far as... Did you start with a group? Are you part of, like, any music group? Oh, yeah, shit. It's like this. I'm part of a group called The Local Legends. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? We just continuously do our thing. I mean, we're a group, but we're still independent artists at the same time. Yeah, of course. You know, when we come together, it's local legends in this bitch. When we separate, you know, shout out the home team. Where are they from? Are they all from the same uh, area? Nah, they from Savannah. Okay. Uh, Yeah, both the, uh, well, shoot, most of the local legends, like, are here local from Savannah. I mean, you got some that's from different places, really. I would rather you ask all of them personally where they each individually from. Yeah, I <laughs> but I know most of the motherfuckers from Savannah. Okay. You know, yeah. I understand that. So um, as far as how do you feel about being in a music group versus just being an independent artist? Do you think that's necessary nowadays? I feel like we're seeing a lot more groups as far as like YNW Melly, um, NWF, STG. Mm. Uh, do you feel like Rap groups are the new thing? I'm not even going to say the new thing. I mean, shit, it's been going on for generations and generations where it's been like, you know, groups. They'll start off as groups exploding, and then, you know what I mean, they do their thing, collect their checks, and when that shit run out, they take whatever they had individually and, you know, Mm -hmm. keep that maintaining it. That's just what I've seen over the years, and I'm like, shit, if, if we as a group can make that shit happen, then fuck it, I'm for it. Shit. Are you... Go ahead. Like, are you like committed to staying here in Savannah or? Oh hell no! Nah. Okay. I'm not gonna say. I'm cause nobody's gonna stay nowhere, no one place. The thing about it is, Savannah is a good city. It's a beautiful city, and it's a it's a great place to like start your journey. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're not from the city. I mean, you always gotta, you know, do your thing. I mean, right. Fuck all that. Anyway, <laughs> look. I'm going to say it like this. Savannah is just like a starting point. Right. And it can help you build your craft. It helps you sharpen your steel. And it's definitely going to make you aware that there are people that exist that may be better than you or progress faster than you do. And the only thing you should do with that is just, you know, take that, learn, push yourself harder, and continue to grow. 
Mm-hmm. Use Savannah as like the training ground. Pretty much. Pretty good. I feel that. Uh, as far as like <clears throat> you personally, where do you be releasing your music? Do you release on SoundCloud? Do you release on iTunes? Oh man, if you go to my little beta website right now, you can find it everywhere. On, on all the major streaming yeah, platforms. Yeah, all, all major streaming platforms. Uh, SoundCloud, Radio Mac, Audio Mac. <laughs> so I was ha- I was having a conversation with um someone the other day, and they said that they believe that releasing music on iTunes is dead now with all the different um services that allow you to upload to iTunes and Spotify and all that. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that statement? You said that it's dead? Yeah. Like, coming up off SoundCloud is dead. Man, I wouldn't say coming up off SoundCloud is dead. I mean, wherever you can find your come up at, man, I feel like that's where you need to be at. If yeah. your shit is popping on Audio Mac, fuck with the Audio Mac crowd. Your shit popping on Reverb Nation, fuck with the Reverb Nation crowd. I'm talking about whatever's fucking with you, you should fuck with it. If it's giving you energy, give it back. You feel what I'm saying? And I, I agree with that because uh, what they were saying, too, is that they feel like because it's so easy to get on iTunes and Spotify that if you're not doing stuff like that, it almost doesn't validate you as like you're you're investing in to yourself enough. Mm-hmm. And then you're going the easy route, dropping on SoundCloud and free services. But I like you just said, if people are fucking with your music on Audio Mac or if you're getting plays and people are repeatedly coming back to your profile to play your music on SoundCloud, why not continue doing that? Exactly. I mean, and that could be your marketing strategy right there, you know take your campaign and you know have a focus on soundcloud or you know people who listen to soundcloud soundcloud events things that they have going on like that and just go from there it seems like less artists are like coming off of soundcloud because of the connotation of like a soundcloud rapper it's like it has a face now of what it looks like and like that image is starting to go away so it seems like niggas ain't popping off of soundcloud like they were like in the like beginning of last year Mm. but I mean, you're right, though. It's like, whatever works for you, whatever platform. So and just run with that shit. And see, just bouncing off of what you said, you said that being a SoundCloud rapper has a face, but not mm-hmm. really anymore. So now it's an empty slot to right. where somebody else can mm-hmm. come up and have a redefine new face. It. Redefine the face mm-hmm. of it. Like, if you, wanna, if you want that motherfucker to be a lyrical rapper, man, you better goddamn put your work in mm-hmm. and redefine a SoundCloud rapper as a lyrical artist or an artist of importance. Yeah. That would be wild, too, if that was to happen. <laughs> Somebody going to do it now? What? That should be wild. Somebody going to do it now. Hey, so as far as like your creative process, mm-hmm. describe that to me. Is it freestyling? Do you write? It's like a mixture. But usually, like I just like to have fun and then press record and then just do shit. And then we go in there. And then as long as it sounds legit, I feel like it's a go. Do you have any projects coming up? Well, I actually just dropped uh, Champions Forever on SoundCloud and Audio Mac currently. We are working on the uh, the mainstream uh, outlets like iTunes mm-hmm. and things of that sort. Having a little trouble right now. You know how they do. Have you heard of TuneCore and DistroKid? I have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, uh, those are actually heavy in my rotation of what I use okay. when I actually release like music's on like the the mainstream platforms. The only thing about that is, it's like streams don't produce as much money as people think it does. Like, or you know, I mean, shit. Like, I'm talking about you can have a million streams and still like I don't mean <laughs> shit. You, you ain't got no <laughs> bread. Nah, they're, they're robbing our so, so 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 exactly. So if we can. It, what I'm thinking is, if we can figure out what's the next level for like for artists to be able to like sit down with either label heads or something and come up with like not record deals or 360 deals, but something that benefits both parties, like streaming, like royalty like, deal, boom, royalty Stream, deals, streaming royalty, and the, and the thing about it is, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? If you split it, like split it in something that you're comfortable with, let you know that like, you can build and survive and do what you got to do with your mm-hmm. life. You know what I'm saying? When you actually take a second to sit down with those heads and just sell songs individually. That's why a lot of people are starting to do singles now because they want to like, okay, if I can make one song and I can make this much off of this one song, boom, they're going to want another song in a minute. You know what I'm saying? Once that song dies down or... Did you listen to uh, Lil Nas and shit? <laughs> I've heard. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. What, how do you feel about him uh, putting four remixes out? 
for the same song. Lil Wayne. Okay. <laughs> Are you saying Lil, Lil Nas X is Lil Wayne? No, but <laughs> if, 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 if Lil Wayne could got them put out seven songs, same freestyle, different beat, a motherfucker put out the same song four yeah. different ways. I, I think a lot of people don't realize, like, and this may not be true, but this is what I took from it. I think it was a marketing scheme as far as the streams. Because, you know, like, when you drop a single out before mm-hmm. your album, that they all count towards your project's numbers at the mm-hmm. end of the week. So, say you have the one, the original Old Town uh, Road that blew up, I don't know how many views it has, like 33 million or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then you have Billy Ray Cyrus. Everyone went crazy when that happened. So, you got yeah, both of thing. these, like, 66 million. And then rip. you put Thug, and Mason then, Ramsey, Mariah Carey by the hey, hop that, on it. That young like, kid killed that shit though. <laughs> that shit is wild. Hey, tell me, like, <laughs> he came on harder than Young Thug. That shit was trash. It was funny as hell. <laughs> that shit was trash. <laughs> hey, you say it's trash, but niggas still gonna play it at the party. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Look, facts. That shit funny, but you, you ain't gotta agree with nobody personal like to like they song. Man. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Shit. Um, I wanted to ask you though. You were talking about like sitting down with like label heads. So like, what have you seen? Because it seems like a lot of artists here they don't have like a big homie that's been like successful, so they know what to do. Mm-hmm. So it's like, who do you go to to get advice about like either like generating revenue and doing music? Because everybody says like, music is like you ain't gonna make no money in music. So mm-hmm. it's like, what do you see as being or like what do you go to to get that advice? Shit. The best advice I can give you on that is you got to go to the books. You actually got to mm-hmm. research the knowledge. If you don't have somebody that you can just sit and talk to and has actually acquired something, just shit, go for what you know. Right. Like, there's successful people that you listen to on a daily basis that have books with pretty much breaking down what they did, how they did mm-hmm. it. It might not be to the T, but you can get a general idea of which direction you want to go right. and what advice you want to take from those words. Mm-hmm. What's been the hardest part about your uh, career so far, musically? Getting paid shows <laughs> <laughs> on me. But the thing about it is, I think, it, it, I'm going to say paid shows here where I live currently. Because mm. um, this is where I have like some of my heaviest music influence and also back home as well. And um, it's like, here they want you, man. They want you to come out all the time. Like, yo, yo, come out here, come out here, yo, come do this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, Who are you talking oh, you about wrong. this far? Well, that's why it's not even you anybody at. specifically. It's just all the places in general. Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is, it's just it's just a fact of figuring out a formula of, you know, putting everything together, proper promotion. You know what I mean? Uh, having a <clears> venue <throat> locked, set, and ready with no discrepancies. What do you do? You think the how is the uh, conversation with venues around here as far as putting on hip hop events? Is there any <laughs> like man? I'm gonna tell you shit. I don't even be trying to talk to them. if they if a motherfucker come to me talking about hey, we gotta get an opportunity for a show. I'm in there. If not, I'm not trying to. The thing about it is, if they want to book the acts, they'll book the acts. Mm. Like it's people booked all the time, and I don't believe that they sat there and been like, hey man, y'all booking. I'm pretty sure they went and found, oh, we like these guys. Yeah. Let's bring them in here. Let's pay them for a show. So if you want me in the venue, shit, holla at me. I can't, I'm not just I can't just be in your face and then you, you know, you like. I feel like that's why you need you you need a manager for though. Like a manager's kind of manager. But shit though. But if you got an artist that ain't making no money, what are you gonna have? What are you gonna do with a manager? That's facts. I mean, so it's when I think of a manager, I think of someone that kind of focuses on more of obviously the business side of things so that the artist has time and the free mind space to just be able to create and do what they want to do. The artist still has to know what's up though. Cause that's how Absolutely. people end up getting Yeah, played. you gotta be briefed on stuff. But as far as like, you know, the amount of time that goes into emailing and calling all these different places, like that could be very taxing, especially when, you know, you have a nine to five and then you get home mm-hmm. and you got other shit to do. Like, well, see, I look at it like this. I feel where you're coming from. But see, that's where the term burn the midnight oil comes from. Mm. Because it's like this. Either you're going to make time to be successful mm. or you're not. You know what I'm saying? So if you got to be up, you know what I'm saying, till 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, sending emails out and shit like that, 
then you got to do what you got to do because if you can't hey, afford a manager, it's like this. Who the fuck going to manage you? That's true. Yourself. All right, then. Nigga, you better stay up there for sending some emails and shit and seeing what's good. I mean, because that's why like a lot of artists that are not even like good rappers are successful is just because they're consistent. Like, they just stick with their shit. And it just seems to work. But like in Savannah, I remember when I first moved here, like the only show that I saw that had any local artists was uh, CC at Stafford's. Like that was it. Um, you said CC? Mm-hmm, Creative the Crafted. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. That was like the only thing. But that's actually where I first saw you perform. Okay. And I remember that night, Phil was mad as fuck because you wow. had jumped on the bar oh. and you was cussing. <laughs> and they was like, you can't. Cause like excessively, and every other word was bitch nigga, bitch nigga, <laughs> like over and over again. And niggas was hot. That niggas shit. was hot. That shit was funny. <laughs> but hey, you seen uh Phil Nick? They got the they they next made like hot dog packs. Man, they been so mad, boy. <laughs> <laughs> niggas <laughs> was mad. That is tight, boy. On me. Shout out to my boys, man. Phil and Carlito. Y'all know I fuck with y'all boys, but y'all did have hot dogs on the back of y'all neck. <laughs> <laughs> Me, <laughs> <laughs> call him up. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, so um, I believe you said you brought a, a song for us to play. Oh yeah, man. Um, Tell us about that record. I recorded it yesterday, <laughs> sitting in the house with the homies. Yeah. Shit, we just got them chilling and shit, and I said, "Fuck it, we about to record some songs." We got them knocked out like a couple songs. I was like, "Oh, this dope." And then I was like, this shit sound cool. All right, yeah. So we uh we got the Fresh Start exclusive. Got a new track. Let me just keep Shout it. out local legends. Shout out goddamn for the game, goddamn. Shout out to Indigo, shout out to everybody that fought with it, you feel me? All right, this is Divine Council. Hey. Came from the bottom for real, they want me to stop, but they know I can't cheat. And I ain't going in until I get a meal. Like a coach in Buffalo, man, I'm stacking bills. Independent, don't want 360 deals. Hustling for nothing, just spinning your wheels. Working the job, just paying your bills. Fuck all that bullshit, man, I wanna live. With a new watch that came with the crib. When I ain't got money, man, I start to trip. Losing my attitude, I tend to flip. Just like a gymnast or a quarter tip. So I roll up me a blender that kill. To clear my mind so that I may heal. From the demons that be giving me hell. I pray to God that I'm not throwing shells Catching bodies cause I know they won't live I forgive my enemies, they know not what they do But if it comes down to it, believe I'ma shoot Survival of the fittest, yeah, and I'm the living proof Cause you's a bitch and I'm a dog, we knocking off the roof Yo baby mama at the spot and she be acting loose And I ain't even ask her, but she said that you a goof she wanna fuck with me because I say what I do So don't be surprised if she acting brand new But back to my phone cause you are so hopeless I don't give a fuck bitch I'ma keep going Like in the jazz up on the bitch we flowing Know how we do it they know that we holding The tummy bumps cause we dropping our nuts And they wanna come talk it, but they got no cuts Like him with cigarettes they getting crushed Yeah read your 51 man they getting rushed I'm stroking these tracks <laughs> like a paint with a brush Young busky yeah that's why your bitch gon' lust Giving me face and now I'm about to Bush. Ain't wasting the drop, no, she catching the nut. Bending it over with her floppy butt. And she threw it back, I'ma watch her eat rub. Local legends, and we move like a bus. We want the money in God, we trust. That's definitely Icy Twat. That's how Icy Twat be like a fuck. <laughs> I fuck with Icy Twat. That shit rock mm-hmm. Shit, that was hard. That was some hard shit. When's that supposed to drop? Shit, probably like, you know, I don't know yet. Shit, whenever I feel like. We finished enough shit for us to drop something. That's when we'll drop it. I feel it. So you you said we. You talking about uh, local legends as a collective? Oh yeah, yeah, look, yeah. Local legends as a whole, man. We like I said. Um, Does I the just, group have a project coming out? Well, shit. Not as a like a. It's it really my project that's gonna be coming out. It's gonna be No Hook Volume Two. Okay. Uh, I just dropped the No Hook Volume One like a couple months back. Uh, did a little video for it or whatever. Now I just want to drop a No Hook Volume Two because we getting shit done. So it's like, fuck it, why not? How many uh, music videos do you have out right now? 
I say about like three or four. Yeah. Three, about three or four. Were those all filmed in Savannah? They were. Yeah. All of them were filmed in Savannah. Yeah, that's what's up, fam. Um, I also got this uh beat I wanted to play for you. I know you said that you used to, or you do freestyle. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. if you want to try and take that on, we'll yeah, play man, that. fuck it. We could try. It might be elementary, my dear Watson. <laughs> Every day, we gotta make a new way. Frito Lay, that's your bitch, cause she free to lay. See, we don't really get no fuck, you know I came to play. Like Freddy Cougar in your dreams. No, we give it to him. No, you hear them loud screams in the background because I make the flow so serene. And I promise when I spit that shit, you know it's supreme. No Taco Bell Grande. I'm doing it my way. And if you don't like it, then you can see the highway. Independent shit for real. I stand up on my own two feet. And I just use myself when I'm out here to eat. Vegetarian shit. But your bitch still eat the meat See, we don't really get no fuck When I'm talking, it's not discreet Bitch, I came straight from streets Right for Hope County, but town raised me But Savannah made me an animal So don't play me Uh, like Chuck E. Cheese games I change your mind frame You know I maintain And I do the damn thing Drop in the sis like I'm dang And if they wanna talk about it Then just try me, I'm gang Came from the bottom for real You know what the deal is My hand broke off So I know you feel this He jumping off the meter Ooh, they acting like cheerleaders Every time I hit the flow It's like they leaning off a leader You feel me? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, boy. I see you. I see you. Hey, shit. That started off a little slow, but damn, you came on that bitch. Fuck it. I fuck with you, bro. Honestly. <laughs> no, nah, because, like, honestly, not a lot of people, not a lot of rappers these days can freestyle. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the fact that you just came in here and actually just hopped on the beat like that, yeah. I respect that. That's awesome. Yeah, because when I heard the beat, I was like, I don't know how you're going to flow on this shit. No, I'm not. <laughs> hey, weird type beat. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a fucking weird type beat. Hey, no cap. I made that bitch probably like four years ago. Damn. That's a Ray Me and Nights right there. Like, that was like one of my first two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably like the first or second oh, beat I've ever yeah. made. So, <laughs> hey, it came on hey, that you bitch. You probably should make a beat like that. You know, Aladdin just came out. You might have For some him. views. Right. That'd be they hard. Did, they uh, got them movie views. Update <laughs> oh, Rotten Tomato score a bit. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Uh, speaking of movies and shit, um, oh, shit. Lion King, live action. How you feel about that? Remaking the Lion King. I haven't seen it. I don't think it's out yet. Nah, they it? dropped a clip of it though. That shit look weird. <laughs> Yeah, that shit that. look weird. I mean, but it's the same thing as them trying to remake Sonic live. Are they trying to introduce us to aliens and shit? Sonic look like Sway Lee. Like, <laughs> that nigga don't look like Sonic. Like, that nigga does not look like Sonic oh, at all. Wrong. They're not Sway Lee. Just make the nigga look like oh, Sonic. Shit. And it's like, it's not hard because it's like, you already have the template that's there. Like, they just trying to do some fucking Well, like I said, they trying to introduce us to aliens, man. That's all it is. That yeah, was... all this uh, area. Storm area <laughs> yeah, you already know. Hey. hey, I won't lie, I'm dying off these memes, though. <laughs> yeah, memes are funny as hell. They changed it from Invade Area 51 to clapping alien cheeks, boy. Yeah, uh, no cap. I been dead. I, I saw an alien twerking on a nigga oh. last night. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. They say they're gonna force a nigga to uh, roll his joints and shit. Just make that nigga smoke weed. That's crazy. <laughs> and Space Jam 2, they're doing uh, Space Jam 2 with LeBron James. Oh, shit. Bro, that, that's a that's a big uh, bar to reach for. 
Space Jam was good, bro. You know what I'm saying? How you going? That's a classic, <laughs> dog. Like, first Space off, what's Jam the storyline about to be? That's where I'm at. Like, you about to do the same thing just with LeBron for the next generation? Like, that. I don't. They don't need a second one, though. It doesn't have to be remade. Like, it's Gucci. The classic is there already. That's, just go watch it. Like, but I think I think it's more. It might be more of a LeBron thing, man. He might want to got down. He when he was young, he saw himself in Space Jam, I man. Feel that. <laughs> That man was like, man, I'm going to be in Space Jam, too. But you got to understand what you're going against, though, when you try to yeah. remake a movie like that. Like, well, that's that's what... That's hard. Buddy said something about Master P. Uh, hook up, too. He been blowed. <laughs> <laughs> I got the hook up with my shit. They need another baller blocking. Like, them hood movies are they were iconic. They are. Iconic. Uh, so, I was watching... Um, the Kanye, Kanye and David Letterman interview, mm-hmm. and he was kind of talking about some serious stuff as far as his mental breakdown and stuff like that. And the conversation that they were having is Kanye was saying that it's unfair for society and all of us to look at artists when they get injured and expect them to go get right back in the game type shit. He was comparing... Mm-hmm. Artists to athletes as far as like spraining an ankle Mm -hmm. and being forced to just hop back on the court and go play football. Like you wouldn't Mm -hmm. do that with an artist. So when, uh, or you wouldn't do that with an athlete. So when an artist has like a mental breakdown or is going through personal issues, why do we not give them the time to heal? Do you agree with that? Or do you feel as an artist, you should be sharing your breakdown? Um, no, like it's like this. Somebody gonna know about your breakdown, regardless of what you're talking about. Like, like you, you might think you're keeping it private or whatever, mm-hmm. or people want you to share it. But either way it goes, whether you're dealing with it in a good way or not, people gonna talk about you. So, however you choose to handle it, that's on you. You just don't worry about nobody else when you come to handling your own personal situations. Even if a motherfucker know about that shit, he, like you really ain't want nobody to know. They like you, like damn, this motherfucker know. Like shit, fuck it. It is what it is. You just gotta got down, keep going. Like shit, it's that. That's that's really what got down. Well, you don't think make you, you? You feel me? You don't think uh, you should have the time to just kind of back away from the spotlight for a little bit and recuperate if you want to. Don't be so focused on like yeah, get your fans. Like if you if you focused on like I guess I guess we talking about fans. I guess. Like, giving them time to, like, back away? No, I'm talking about uh, the artist. So he's talking about when... Remember last year he had that breakdown? He had, like, 20-minute rant. On yeah, but you're saying what the fans think about him having a breakdown, right? What... I'm saying that... Uh, do you feel like the artist should have time, should be able to have time to just back away from the spotlight? You know, and we just look deal at, with the personal shit. Yeah, and just deal with... Just oh. kind of go off the map for a little bit. If that artist feels like it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, if a person feel like, I I got to deal with some shit... I gotta back up. Like, motherfucker could be going through a divorce, motherfucker don't wanna lose a wife or some shit, or anything. They could be losing their mother, you know what I'm saying? Any any type of thing like shit. If I feel like I wanna goddamn step back and handle my business for a second, I'ma holler at y'all in a minute. Yeah, he was just talking about that society just kinda puts the pressure on you to be at your best at all times. The thing with Kanye is that he had his breakdown publicly and was saying crazy ass, stupid ass shit that was offending people. And then once it started offending people, then he said, I have a mental illness. Which is like, it's not for me to be like, yeah, that nigga was lying. But it's like, it's hella convenient that now you have a mental illness. Like, it's just... I mean, let's talk about Kanye. Like, I'm not going to say mental illness, but, you know, this nigga is special for sure. Yeah, for, no, no. Like, he's extremely gifted. Um, very touched. But it just, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, the Letterman interview was good. Like, you got to see his creative process and shit. But, um... He didn't go off the map. He had a breakdown and let everybody see it. And then he was upset when people had opinions about it. Like, nigga, you're acting crazy mm-hmm. as fuck. Like, fuck people have shit to say. I don't know. If he would have backed away, it probably would have been better. You see uh, Instagram's putting in a new algorithm to combat cyberbullying. What? How you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, no, no. So this is what they're doing. They're uh, They're marking key phrases and words, obviously. And if the algorithm picks it up and thinks it may be offensive, they're now going to send you a notification saying, hey, yeah, this could be offensive. 
I think I think they've been doing that. Okay, okay, post it. (laughs) (laughs) Good to know. Post that shit. What you talking about? (laughs) Oh my god. That is just another thing. Good move or toughen up. I mean, I'm just like, I'm not really, it's, I don't really have an opinion about it. You're going to feel how you feel about that shit, man. I know me, when I see that shit, I laugh. Yeah. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't take it personal. You can turn comments off. Like, that's the oh, thing. Me. And you can block niggas. Yeah, like, you have the choice to let people talk yes. about this shit. I'm so sick exactly. of hearing, like, the cyberbullying argument. Like, just get offline, nigga. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> Put your phone yeah. down. Like, it's so crazy. I remember I posted something on my story. It was like a Rico Nasty song. And she said, like, little hoe. And I, like, typed little hoe. They took my shit down because it was offensive. I said, what? <laughs> little hoe? Like, what the fuck? Like, this isn't directed to anybody. So it's just, like, another thing of censorship. Niggas ain't going to be able to do a fucking thing on the internet. Yeah. Um, that kind of ties into, uh, you seen the Kevin Gates <laughs> up on Complex? Oh, what happened? All right, so he was explaining how he came to getting into a relationship with his cousin. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, if you get... <laughs> he's talking about if you, he, he didn't know this woman, he meets this attractive woman, mm-hmm. he's flirting with her, they build a, re- a relationship, mm-hmm. he ends up having sex with her, he goes to bring her to meet the family type shit. Mm-hmm. And his grandma pulls him aside talking about, you know, she figured it out, uh, yeah, that's like one of your cousins type thing. Mm-hmm. His reaction or his response was, you know, I already did the deed, and you got that good, good. So why stop? <laughs> <laughs> the How fact, you- the fact that he's from Louisiana is so embarrassing. Like it's so embarrassing. <laughs> like he doesn't have to say shit like that out loud. Nigga. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. Like, why are you telling niggas that? Man, that's crazy. Like, if you slipped up and fucked your cousin, like. And you found out it was your cousin, it would have been like immediately like, oh shit, I can't fuck with you no more. You my cousin. But then you proceed to fuck with her and then tell people like, what the fuck? You like kind of brag about it now. That shit weird. That's weird. (laughs) And his wife is bad as fuck. Like, how? How? Are they still together? Drico, yeah. She down as hell. Down as a fuck. (laughs) Ain't no way in hell. You got your husband talking crazy every other interview. What? Sucking toes, drinking piss. Bath water, uh, niggas weird. <laughs> <laughs> niggas weird, dog. So, um, as far as your music influences, who do you say is kind of, who do you look up to in music? As of lately, I've been jamming a lot of Barry White, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really. For real, that motherfucker be right. <laughs> 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 I talk about that shit be right. I'm talking about. Uh, I know you heard that playing your game. I don't know, baby. Man, mm-hmm. bro. Mm-hmm. You got to get some soul in it. Hey. Hey. So do you listen to artists from that time all the time, or is this something like just I like, like, like I, listen, I listen to like a lot of older stuff a lot, but it's like, it's it's pretty much a mixture. Mm-hmm. I kind of let it, I kind of let it mix so I can be, you know, I can still hear a relevant sound. Right. As well as a classic sound. And then I can just like do something to like put it kind of together. Mm-hmm. I think Barry White is like the perfect combination of that because his tone is like very distinctive. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, girl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a very hey, distinctive yeah, tone. Baby. I'll talk about it. And that nigga look, was clean too. <laughs> man, and then you put that shit on, right? You like, so Cam put that shit on. It's old. It's old. Shout out to Oh, God. Barry go do the work. I just got. I'm just. I'm just there. You feel me? <laughs> so Barry White. Anybody else that comes uh, around? Let me see, man. I say Barry White, Bobby Womack. Damn. Fucking uh, man. The Scott, I would not six. expect you. Yeah. Goddamn Roy Ayers. <sighs> man, goddamn uh, who? Is, man, my nigga, man. He can't. Oh yeah, Curtis Mayfield. Mm. That motherfucker dog. Listen. Man. Do you listen to uh, Gil Scott Heron? I've heard of it, but I've never, I've never yeah. heard of it. It's like some old revolutionary type shit. It's kind of like in the yeah. same pocket of those artists that you named. I might have to check that out. That's what's up. Real, yeah. Where do you get your uh, like taste in music from? Does that come from your parents? Does it come from just personal searching? I say half and half. Yeah. Like, um, I get a lot of my music influence from my parents. Yeah. 
Uh, definitely listening to old school shit all the time. And I'm talking about that shit. I play that bit at day. I'm talking about I'm still in that bit. Like, <laughs> man, nah, for real, boy. Oh, yeah. Look, I be, and people, man, we went on a family outing. And I brought my speakers out. And I played straight old school hits. And I'm talking about the whole family just... I'm talking about grandparents and all. Ain't nobody talking about turn that cuss. Boy, they, boy I'm talking about... <laughs> Everybody yeah. vibing. And, and I'm like, this stuff I listen to. So I said, yeah. bet, they do it. Yeah. Like, and, and everybody can feel it. Anybody from uh, newer times that you listening to? Local legends. <laughs> Good plug. <laughs> For real. But um, I see... I mean... Just over time, like just lately, I've been we just been I just been listening to myself and old school music just yeah. because I'm making my music and I don't want to like hear too much of other people so I can figure out. No, I know how that goes. Myself, yeah, myself and stuff like that, and so like um, so that's what I'm pretty much doing now. I'm just listening to the people I've been recording and myself, and that's about it. I'm really surprised you said Roy Ayers. A lot of niggas don't know about Roy Ayers. Mm. Like, that nigga's the truth. That comes from searching. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga's the truth. Wink, wink. It comes <laughs> from searching. So uh, where where can people find you at? What are your Instagram, Twitter? Uh, Man, look, look. You can find me at www.tuckedinfo <laughs> slash Rico Suave 910. Hey. And you can find me on Instagram at R I Q O S U A V E underscore nine one zero, and that's the same handle on Twitter, and Rico Suave on Facebook. And remember, that's R I Q O S U A V E. I appreciate you. So um, I really don't have anything more to talk about today. I want to thank you for coming through. Absolutely. Um, I think it was a good episode. I'm looking forward to having the rest of the local legends up here. So if uh. Yeah. You can put me in contact with one of them. That'd be cool. And yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, see you next week.